conference. It gives me great pleasure to chair the next debate. Um, my name is Colleen Johnson and I am a member of the Disabled Workers Committee um, and an NEU member. Before I read the committee statement on the impact of COVID-19 on disabled people, I would like to let attendees know how they can engage with me. The Q&A function is open. If you have any statements, observations or points you would like to bring to the committee's attention, please make them using the Q&A function. If there is time at the end of this session, I will try and summarise the main points being made there. The une unequal impact of COVID-19 on disabled people. Conference. When we talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the lives of disabled people, we must start with a statistic. Six in 10 of all deaths involving COVID-19 were disabled people. The government have told us that over 100,000 people have died. They were not as clear that 60,000 of those that died were disabled people. There are no excuses. The government have badly botched their handling of the pandemic. And disabled people have paid the price, often with their lives. The government data has told us that if you are disabled and male, you are 6.5 times more likely to die from COVID-19 than, than a man who is not disabled. If you are a disabled woman, you are, you are 11.3 times more likely to die from COVID-19 than a woman who is not disabled. This is the reality of the pandemic for disabled people. Yet this is not the first time this government's policies have disproportionately impacted upon disabled people. We know that even before the COVID-19 crisis, benefit cuts and austerity hit disabled people the hardest. We know that changes to the welfare system over the past 10 years have left disabled adults four times, work, four times worse off financially than non-disabled adults, according to the Disability Benefit Consortium. And research shows that nearly half of those in poverty, a total of 6.9 million people, are from families which include a disabled person. And disabled members have told their trade unions directly they are concerned the pandemic will push them and their families into poverty. TUC research found that disabled people were more than three times as, three times as likely to have had to use food banks than, than non-disabled people. It is therefore unsurprising that access to food has been a significant issue for disabled people during the pandemic. For those disabled people in the shielding category, this has been particularly challenging as they have experienced significant difficulties in accessing supermarket deliveries. And when discussing in-work poverty, it is, import it is important to address the disproportionate negative impact benefits actions have had on disabled people. Multiple research shows that sanctions do not move disabled people closer to paid work. Instead, they often worsen many disabled people's existing illnesses and conditions, particularly in relation to mental health conditions. With this backdrop to the pandemic, it is no surprise disabled people are worried about how the pandemic and recession will further impact on them financially. Additionally, Evidence shows that the pandemic has worsened existing accessibility isolation and disability related barriers, and it impacts differently on disabled people with multiple identities. For example, during the pandemic, women at risk of domestic abuse have also been isolated with their abuser. As a result, there has been a significant rise in domestic abuse and domestic homicides since lockdown began. Disabled women were already twice as likely to have as other women to experience domestic abuse. So it is likely that disabled women will have disproportionately affect, been affected by domestic abuse during the pandemic. The government's legislative response to the pandemic has also been a concern for disabled people. Disabled trade union members have voiced fears that new laws would effectively free local authorities from some of their duties to provide social care support under the CARE Act 2014. 
reduced protections enshrined in the Mental Health Act, so it takes fewer medical professionals to detain someone. It is essential that these measures are only in force as long as it is required during a period of national emergency. As soon as is practical, they must be repealed. Government should also publish the equality impact assessments that were undertaken when drafting these measures so that disabled people are better placed to understand the likely impacts. Existing government support for disabled people needs to be strengthened and adapted to ensure, ensure it appropriately meets their needs both currently and in the economic downturn. <laughs>